tonight. We have a specially extended reporting Scotland as the country is hit by another day of extreme weather. Warnings are extended to motorists to stay off the roads after hundreds of vehicles became stranded on the M80 overnight. Absolutely horrendous and there were a couple of people, bless them, they deserve a medal. Walking up, giving everybody a, a drink of Bovril. You know, the, there were wagon drivers getting people out of the cars, putting them in the wagons because it's warmer. The First Minister accuses some transport companies of sending lorries on the road for non-essential journeys, despite the warnings. We take a look at how Scotland is coping with the conditions and preparing for more to come. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God! No! Oh! How a bus driver showed incredible skills to avoid a collision with a car struggling on an icy road. And we're with the mountain rescue team in the borders, helping to move essential workers around the area in quite tight conditions. Good evening. Much of the country remains paralysed tonight by the extreme weather. Rail and air travel is still badly affected. Thousands of schools remain closed. There was criticism today from the First Minister for some HGV drivers who ignored the red weather warning to stay off the roads. Well, over the next hour, we'll be bringing you a series of reports from across the country on how those in the worst affected areas are coping. But first, Andrew Anderson reports on the 1,000 cars and lorries that were stuck overnight on the M80. The day after the long night before, and still they were stuck. But slowly, ever so slowly, these lorries broke free of winter's grip. Glad to be clear at last. Some of these drivers had been stranded for as much as 15 hours. The snow and sub-zero temperatures on this motorway have been unrelenting for two days now. The heavy goods vehicles brought to a standstill, unable to cope with the conditions. Absolutely horrendous and there were a couple of people, bless them, they deserve a medal. Walking up, giving everybody a, a drink of Bovril. You know, the, there were wagon drivers getting people out of the cars, putting them in the wagons because it's warmer giving them, you know, drinks and, and food, whatever they got. Absolutely spirit of the people, unbelievable. Horrendous on the motorway coming down from them, uh, Dunblane. So you were heading south, were Heading you? south from Isle of Sky, coming back home to North Wales. And how long were you stuck for? I've been stuck here since half past six last night. And I was lived here in... Catherine McKinley was one of those who helped. Her house overlooks the M80. My daughter and I came out to see if we could... Um, help people with hot drinks or see if people needed any assistance or phone calls making. And this morning she broke through this fence um, to reach drivers and passengers we stranded overnight. Was, um, we managed to get the uh, elderly lady who used walking sticks um, back down into my house um, and my neighbour um, who'd helped us and my daughter then went back out walking up and down the motorway to see what else we could do to help people. Down on the M80, volunteers ensured those stuck in the cold at least had some food and drink. Oh, two biscuits, very cold for the back. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no, Thank you very much. <laughs> and for others, hot drinks reaching them the only way possible, lowered from a flyover. The worst of weather, bringing out the best in folk. This side street runs parallel to the M80. The motorway is just a couple of hundred yards away, but here you can see the sheer volume of snow that's fallen. It's about a foot deep, and still it comes. Yesterday, it was gridlock on the M80. A 1,000 vehicles stuck at one point, tailback stretching for eight miles. Vehicles did eventually get moving last night, only to become stuck again a few miles further on. Some try to pass the time, recording an experience that they're unlikely to forget. Trying to reassure, provide uh, food, drink and what have you, um, to obviously reassure them that we're going to get them moving as soon as. But as you can see, there's been a lot of hard work put in by the officers on the scene, digging stuff out, the gritters coming up the opposite direction, you know, to try and obviously free the vehicles. It took men, women and machines to get this motorway moving again. But with the amber warning now extended, 
the beast from the east continues to bite. Well, let's go to Andrew now. Andrew, some extraordinary scenes there and, and, and some great examples of kindness. What are conditions like specifically on the M80 at the moment? Well, it's just turned nasty here again in the last few minutes, but the M80 is now fully open, as is the rest of the motorway network around this part of Scotland. They got the northbound open uh, a couple of hours ago. Southbound was a wee bit more tricky between junctions 8 and 9. Part of the challenge has been these ever-changing weather conditions and the sub-zero temperatures. However, in the last wee while, uh, things have turned uh, a little bit bad uh, a few miles down the road here at Castle Cary. That's where the problems started yesterday. We've got some pictures uh, recorded just a few minutes ago um, which s show uh, snow again coming in. Um, now I'm told they're sending extra gritters to that section of the M80. There are no plans at the moment to close it but they're keeping that very much under review. Uh, back here at this stretch of the M80 at Denny, as I say, it is fully reopened and uh, any other uh, day of the, the week uh, there would be a stream of traffic on this motorway but as you can see very, very quiet tonight. It would seem that drivers have heeded the warnings just to stay away from this motorway today and, and maybe some have also heeded the advice not to travel, particularly during the, the red warning earlier on today. As we know, the amber warning continues until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The very strong advice is do not travel unless you feel that you have to. And if you do have to travel, take precautions. Make sure you have a, a full tank of fuel. Make sure you have a fully charged mobile phone. Have food and drink with you in case you do get stuck and, and just watch how you go. But to be honest, given the conditions here tonight, it, it's, it's freezing. It's going to get colder. It hasn't got above minus three or four today. If you don't have to go out, why would you want to? Andrew, we saw the depth of the snow in your report. I was in that area today. There are hundreds of cars littering the streets. How is the wider area coping with this? Well, the, the, the main roads are passable with care, but we found several motorists, we came across several drivers who'd turned off the main road onto the side streets and suddenly you're into about a foot of snow and the cars just grind to a halt. It was interesting, we travelled down to Stirling and we noticed a number of businesses closed. So obviously staff either couldn't get in or had chosen not to travel because of the warning. There was a, a car showroom in darkness. We went into a supermarket looking for a cup of coffee. The, the, the supermarket market was open but the cafe was closed so uh, it, the, the roads certainly quieter and conditions still very very difficult if you are trying to get around. Andrew Anderson thank you. Well the First Minister singled out the M80 today in Parliament as she criticised some lorries for taking to the roads during the red warning. She said that given some of the brandings she saw it would be hard to say their transport was unavoidable. But road hauliers blamed the state of the motorway and said they deliver vital supplies. Here's our transport correspondent, David Henderson. Extreme weather won't stop some drivers, even when there's a red weather warning advising against travel. This morning on the M74 motorway, the main road between Scotland and England, lorries and vans were out in force. At the same time, further north, hundreds of drivers on the M80 were starting to move off after a night trapped in their vehicles. They'd learned the hard way what happens when a road becomes blocked. In the Scottish Parliament, the First Minister questioned why some lorries were on the motorway at all. During a red weather warning, an HGV should not be uh, on one of our trunk roads unless it is absolutely unavoidable. And I uh, saw some uh, branded HGVs uh, in, in pictures uh, yesterday, uh, and given the branding on them, I would struggle to say that their uh, transport was unavoidable. So that is a message I think should go out very strongly from this chamber to companies who use HGVs during weather conditions like this. Hundreds of lorries going nowhere. On the M80 last night, the queue went on for miles. It underlines how many such vehicles are on Scotland's roads and how much they're used. With the temperature now back above zero, here in Glasgow at least, the M8 motorway is now black again and the transport system can start to return to normal. And that's absolutely crucial because for any company, up and down the country that makes or sells anything, they rely on logistics and transport. 
for what they call just-in-time delivery. And when that system stalls, we soon notice. Around Scotland, some shops are out of basic supplies, like bread and milk, after deliveries were held up. The salts, I mean, it's melted, it, virtually everything's gone. So that's been a big help. But this road haulier says the M80 could have been maintained better with salt and snow ploughs to keep supplies moving. We have to realise that our industry delivers absolutely everything that's in those shops. It doesn't matter whether it comes in in a, a plane or a boat, it has to go in a truck at some point. And we are the linchpin in that industry and we're very, very important. I think times like today and tomorrow probably being the same, the country will realise how important the haulage industry is. Tonight, the Unite Union accused one logistics firm of forcing drivers to deliver furniture when the red alert was in place. They want binding rules so weather warnings can't be ignored. David Henderson, reporting Scotland. Well, let's take a closer look at the areas worst affected. Tens of thousands of people have been unable to get to work. Normally busy roads and streets have been virtually deserted. First, Aileen Clark reports on the picture in Scotland's biggest city, Glasgow. Just after six this morning, a gritter ploughs past the Kibble Palace, while a blizzard swirls at a nearby school. And those desperate to get to work start picking their way through the deepening snow. There was no rush hour on the Clydeside Expressway, but plenty more snow showers. In the heart of the city, this shopping centre, like many other shops and banks, closed since yesterday afternoon. This is Argyle Street, one of Glasgow's busiest shopping streets. We'll just take a look at it this morning. I mean, normally this would be really, really busy with buses and taxis in this portion of the street, but it's pretty empty this morning. And all around us, people are just trudging through the snow to get to where they need to be. I think when you're on your own business, you just need to get on with it, so it's not too bad. Uh, I can't get out, I live in Lockerbie. Um, I work in Glasgow, but uh, I've been trying to get home since yesterday afternoon when we all got sent home and uh, all the trains are off, no alternative travel, I'm stuck. And he wasn't the only one. No information on the boards. That's because there were no trains to anywhere from Glasgow's central station this morning, but no shortage of people turning up in hope. Yeah, I'm trying to get back to Gourik where I live. Um, I tried yesterday, I was lucky enough to get a hotel last night. Um, if I can't today, then just try and get a hotel again tonight. In Bristol now, in the West Country, there's a red weather warning. So even if the flight was OK from Glasgow, they won't be landing at Bristol tomorrow. So we're in a bit of a pickle and fingers crossed for the trains. No flights at all out of Glasgow Airport, where some stranded passengers spent the night. They gave us camp beds with some blankets. Um, we managed to get some water and coffee, but the kids had nothing to eat. Um, Tesco's was closed, the coffee shop was closed, so it's just been a nightmare. It's a real challenge in these events. The airlines are doing their best, they've got resource on the ground. When you can't get staff into work, it is a huge challenge, and when there's no hotel rooms as well, you're really up against it. Um, but we've, we've done as much as we possibly can. At Buchanan Street bus station, the stances were empty. And with services stopping yesterday afternoon, the cafe became an overnight refuge for those stranded there. At about 11 o'clock, it was full uh, to capacity. We had 60, 70 people lying about the couches, kids, everybody all making themselves comfortable. Uh, and it was packed right down to the, the back door there. This family was still there this afternoon, desperate to get home to Aberdeen. The cafe people were very nice, they opened for us for the, like, for the night and they provided us with blankets and uh, the heating for the baby. For the roads around Glasgow, this is one of the main gritting plants. 400 tonnes a day are going down. The challenge hasn't been grit out onto the roads, it's been the persistent snowfalls and accumulations which have meant that when we have gritted, the snow has accumulated immediately afterwards, so the amount of ploughing we have snowfall back on the roads within an hour or two. They are hopeful the city will soon get moving once more. Aileen Clark, reporting Scotland, Glasgow. So what about the other side of the country? Well, more at Kinneborough reports from Edinburgh. Silenced by snow, rush hour reduced to a trickle, many advised to stay home. Trams have been running and lots of Edinburgh commuters forced their way in on foot, many walking miles determined to keep public services going. I'm a doctor and I'm just trying to get to work. 
And I do actually normally walk, but it's not normally quite this snowy. <laughs> you got a two mile walk ahead of you. Yes. What are conditions like? Um, oh, so far, all right. To be honest, I'd rather be walking than driving. It seems safer on the pavement. <laughs> Airport buses were on, but there were no planes and only a few trains this afternoon. The guys out on the ground, it's horrific. They've got to get out to remote places. Dig, we had one train yesterday, we had to dig him out about six times. Watch what happened when this car crossed lanes into approaching traffic. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God! No! Oh! Heroic road skills from this Lothian bus's driver. No, 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 no! There were many acts of kindness to help others struggling, some very keen to keep going. But the taxis are out providing a service for people. We're trying our best, you know. Others were unimpressed. We're used to this stuff, but uh, we realise that, you know, it's kind of shutting things down here. Two shelters welcomed strangers. This church was open overnight last night, offering food, drink, shelter and warmth, as well as support for anyone who was stranded. It says it will remain open again right through this period of severe weather, helping anybody who's stuck. <laughs> Another day off school, many will be shut a third day tomorrow. Staff and exam pupils urged to work from home. It's great to be off school for a while and just have a little mini holiday. Doing sledging with my friends and snow angels. This office worker declined home working options. <laughs> For those who don't need to go far, it's much easier to take the snow in their stride. Maura Kinneborough, Reporting Scotland, Edinburgh. Well, both Glasgow and Edinburgh airports are closed tonight and some passengers are facing a second night of disruption. Katrina Renton is there for us now and yes, it's looking pretty deserted, Katrina. It is, Jackie, and that's because since the red warning has been lifted, some people have been able to get away from here now. People that were stuck here last night, around 200 people were in the terminal here last night, while others were in hotels and on camp beds in hotels. But since that red warning has been lifted, taxis and coaches have been able to get some people home. But there are others who are still here. And Marjorie Russell and Jane Scott are both from Irvine. And you can have got a story to tell us, haven't you? We arrived here yesterday morning at five o'clock, hoping to get to LA. As you can see, we're still here. Um, our flights have been changed twice. And tomorrow morning, we're hoping to get out through the very good help of some of the British Airways team. Now, there is an offer, isn't there, Jane, of a bed in the hotel, in the, ca in the camp bed that have been supplied by the Red Cross, but you've chosen to stay on the comfier chairs in the arrivals. Yes, because it's warmer in here than in the hotel. And you're prepared for tonight? Show us what you've yes, got here. Yes, I've got my trusty blanket. And of course, Marjorie, this has been a holiday that you've been really looking forward to. How did it feel when you found out that it being, you know, the plane was cancelled? Absolutely terrible. But there's a lot of people in the same boat as ourselves. We're just going to grin and bear it for another night. And that will be about 50 hours we've been in this airport. And you're quite understanding, aren't you, of what's been happening here, that the, the runway has been inundated with massive amounts of snow and the whole taxi area around about. So you, you're not angry no we can't be angry we're only angry because we're not where we should be but not at the airport they're <laughs> doing all they can do to help marjorie and jane thank you so much for talking to us now just a quick scoot round edinburgh airport of course is still closed this evening and aberdeen and inverness are both operational and open but of course they're affected by the knock-ons from the other airports Trina, thank you. Hope those ladies get where they're heading. We'll have an extended weather forecast later, but first, let's join Christopher Blanchett in his very busy weather office. Christopher, um, because of the nature of the snowfalls, there are lots of people who are watching this tonight and they must be wondering what all the fuss is about. Make a valid point, actually, Jackie. Yes, uh, welcome to Weather HQ. It's been busy in here, I'll tell you that. But let me show you the snow radar, and you can probably make out on my screen here these distinct lines of showers. This is what's actually falling out of the sky. And you can see most of them affecting many central and eastern parts of the country. But if you're to the north and south of these, well, you probably won't have seen very much at all. But if you're underneath one of these conveyor belts of snow, well, it's just been relentless with those snow showers continuing to fall. And we've seen from the pictures already the disruption that that causes. And we will be getting a detailed forecast from you later, Christopher, but can you tell us 
how long this is likely to last? Well, there's very little in the way of change to the setup. The conditions that are causing these snow showers will continue to have an easterly. They're coming in from the North Sea, and we've got that easterly wind for the next few days, and it's going to stay bitterly cold. So the showers will continue. It's going to remain cold, but perhaps the showers not quite as heavy or as prolonged as the ones we've seen both yesterday and today. But of course, we'll have a full forecast for you at the end of uh, our extended programme, so just before half past seven. Thank you very much, Christopher. Well, the government minister in charge of keeping Scotland moving, Hamza Yousaf, joins us now from the Traffic Scotland headquarters in South Queensbury. Minister, we've, we've heard warnings about non-essential journeys by some HGV drivers. We heard it from the First Minister. Is there any way that, that such warnings can be made mandatory? Well, we're going to look at all the range uh, of options on the table to us, but the First Minister's point was obviously a valid one that I think most people saw probably on their news feeds and if they were driving or travelling themselves uh, yesterday. Now, the message remains, I should say, not to travel uh, unless absolutely essential until that amber weather warning tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. finishes. But I looked at many cameras, as you can imagine, I was here for, for a number of hours, and I think it would be difficult to justify home furniture, uh, stationery, uh, and the, these kind of things as essential travel. So uh, there is uh, essential travel, of course, essential travel for HGVs. Food and fuel would probably come into that. Uh, but we should look at all the options, and I'll be having a conversation with the trade bodies uh, that represent hauliers uh, shortly to discuss these matters. With increasing incidences of this extreme weather, is it time to look root and branch at how we deal with it? Well, let's just take a step back. This is the most unique and the severest uh, weather warning we've had for snow. We've never had a red weather warning for snow. So this is not a routine uh, weather event. It's an exceptional uh, weather event. I've had many messages over the last 24, 40 hours of people uh, much older than me saying they've lived all their life in Scotland and they've never seen snow this extreme. So there is the exceptional nature of this. Uh, what I would say, of course, is it'd be silly not to learn lessons from any weather event that takes place. So we absolutely should. Uh, and most people, of course, heeded the, weather, the travel advice, which was not to travel and remains not to travel unless absolutely essential. And therefore, uh, the majority of the trunk road network continued to move. Uh, but uh, clearly, of course, where we can learn lessons, uh, we absolutely should. Hamza Yusuf, thank you once again. And there's been a big impact on the NHS across much of Scotland, with many routine operations and hospital outpatients appointments cancelled today and tomorrow. In spite of severe travel disruption, though, most NHS staff have made it to work, as our health and social care correspondent Shelley Joffrey reports. Three and a half miles through the snow to get to work. Glasgow Eye surgeon Susie Drummond just did what she had to do yesterday. Well, I looked out the window and uh, thought, oh, well, obviously I need to get to work today. I've got patients coming to see me and operations to do. So um, it's going to be difficult getting anywhere uh, in a car. I, I actually normally cycle a, a lot of places and uh, didn't like the thought of having to get anywhere on the bike. So that's it, just put my walking shoes on and, uh, and walk. Across the NHS, staff were walking in, staying overnight and working double shifts just to keep things running. People are making a real effort to get to their work um, and people at staff had, had driven for miles not actually knowing how they were getting home. There was people making preparations to spend the night at the children's hospital when I was leaving and lucky enough to be able to walk home. And it's not just NHS staff who've pulled out the stops. Good Samaritan Jeff Miles delivered his midwife neighbour to her night shift. I've got a big 4x4, really capable car available to me. Uh, it seems the, the reasonable thing to do to make sure that she can get into work. She does a fantastic job. So uh, she's working in the uh, high dependency unit with the premature babies. So these people need to get to work. So it seems like the, the decent thing to do. He picked her up again this morning, along with another two midwives, a consultant and even a snowbound patient. When I dropped off my neighbour, there was a, a lady who had just been discharged from the hospital on sticks, really struggling to get anywhere uh, with her young daughter. Um, and so I just I couldn't possibly leave her. So, yeah, I just I gave her an offer of a lift and took her to Easter House, as it turned out. 
Travel disruption will continue tomorrow, but the NHS is confident health care will be delivered to those who most need it. Well, Shelley joins me. Shelley, is at this stage, is it possible to quantify the extent of the disruption to the health service? Well, health boards across Scotland have been working flat out to prioritise those most in clinical need, but there really has been quite an impact for some. Greater Glasgow and Clyde, Lothian, Lanarkshire, Tayside, Fife, Forth Valley and Borders have all postponed routine operations and out outpatient appointments today and they're going to do so again tomorrow, causing lots of frustration, obviously. Calls to the ambulance service were more than 20% higher than normal yesterday. They've been dealing with, inevitably, lots of injuries from falls. The public, though, have been largely heeding advice to stay at home. A&E departments have seen a drop in numbers, but NHS 24 is feeling the strain. They've asked people to call only if absolutely necessary. What do you think the most pressing consequence of this will be? Well, obviously, with all the operations that have had to be cancelled, that is going to have a knock-on effect on waiting times. And those have been heading in the wrong direction, really, since the autumn. We revealed in January, actually, during the flu outbreak, a record number of planned operations were cancelled then due to lack of beds and staff. And it's often older people who are waiting, sometimes in quite a lot of pain for routine surgery like hip replacements and knee replacements. So this is only going to pile on the pressure. Shelley, thank you very much. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to the Health Minister, Shona Robertson, who, like many, is stuck at home. We spoke through Skype and I began by asking about the impact of the disruption on those waiting times and how the government planned to deal with it. Well, first of all, a huge thank you to all the NHS care staff and emergency services who have absolutely been going the extra mile over the last couple of days and really very, very unprecedented, challenging weather conditions to keep people safe. So a big, big thank you to them. Uh, health boards have uh, only cancelled procedures where they absolutely need to. They're only do that as a last resort. But I think people would understand that in the light of this unprecedented weather, that uh, routine procedures have been cancelled by a number of boards, particularly in the central belt, in order to make sure that we can use the resources, particularly the staff that we have, uh, to keep patients safe. So that's not something boards do uh, lightly, but and they've only done it uh, where they've absolutely had to. And of course, in, urgent procedures and cancer operations, for example, have gone ahead. And of course, there was the, the, uh, the, the story of the surgeon who, who managed to uh, walk for miles and miles and miles to get to the, the Royal Alexandra Hospital to uh, carry out a, a cancer uh, pr procedure. So, you know, staff have really gone the extra mile. And again, I would just want to say a big thank you to them. What about the impact on social care? Have you managed to keep on top of it? Yeah, well, the coordination centre that has been established to really to coordinate vehicles, four by four vehicles in particular. So the emergency services have utilised all the the four by fours that they have, and of course we've had businesses coming along offering vehicles, and uh, they have coordinated not just NHS requirements but also council requirements. The priority at the moment is making sure people are kept safe, getting staff to and from their work. So the focus has been particularly on Lothian and getting staff uh, home so they can have rest and then so they can be brought back in tomorrow and again for social care staff as well really making sure that we keep people safe both in hospital uh, and in the community as well. Health Minister Shona Robertson. Well, heavy snow showers have continued to batter the borders. The emergency services have been fighting to keep the main routes open and are still urging people to stay off the roads. Volunteer rescue teams have been working with the police to help move essential workers around the area, often in whiteout conditions. Our reporter Cameron Buttle is in Melrose Forest tonight in full battle dress. Cameron, has there been any respite? It's been another very difficult day in the borders, Jackie. I'm here at the headquarters of the Tweed Valley Mountain Rescue Team in Melrose. And one of the teams has just come back in a couple of minutes ago. Uh, they've been operating over in the western side of the borders in the Peebles area. They're all volunteers, but their job is to get the right people into the right places. Because these teams and these vehicles can reach places that other people can't. 
know, you really don't know quite what, quite what you're going to be up against during the day. So we're ready the team have just got an urgent call. They need to get from Melrose to a pharmacist in Hoyk as soon as possible. It's a journey that should take around half an hour. It's more than double that in these conditions. The roads are uh, pretty, uh, pretty nasty in places, verging on unpassable uh, down the country lanes. We've had uh, a few moments today where we've had to be a little bit aggressive about our driving to get through snow drifts. Few should be out here in this. No worries. Thank you. Uh, good luck Cheers. It's a small bag, but inside are drugs vital for a patient in need. This isn't high-profile mountaintop rescues. This is ongoing work. It's going on in the background all of the time, getting the right people into the right places. Uh, important workers, doctors, nurses, emergency council workers. It's going on all of the time, and it's vital to keep the emergency services running throughout this difficult time in the borders. Have you been busy? Yeah, we've been constant. We haven't been... Another call comes in, and the next job is to take district nurses out to see patients. There's no way they'd get there without the rescue team. We've been going through snow drifts which come up to the level of the bonnet and they've been in series for about 200 metres. We've just literally had to batter our way through them to get to remote farms where we've had to take a, a nurse out to collect a patient or take medication out. One visit down, the nurses are happy. The patient is doing well. It's been challenging, um, but it's actually, I've quite enjoyed it. Yes, we have. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've actually got two teams, so we've got one team at TV and one team at Connell Street, and we've been corresponding with each other, and if one person's going to one area in the town, they're helping out each other, so we're actually working really well together. The rescue team will stick with the nurses for the rest of the day, and they already know they'll be out again tomorrow from First Light. Cameron Battle reporting Scotland, Hoyk. And the latest from the borders tonight is that the amber warning has been extended through till 10 o'clock.